Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Headlongbows video. This is the series of videos that I do entitled What's Happening Today in the Workshop where I stick a camera up and you get to follow along with whatever it is I happen to be making. And this week I have been making and in fact have just finished this uh, children's bow which is actually a commission for a museum uh, up in Scotland I believe and they wanted a bow where young people could actually try out a medieval style bow. They've got other bows which are heavier to give people that idea of what drawing a heavy bow is but then you get some quite littlies coming along who've obviously got no chance of drawing it at least with this one they've got some chance of drawing it and being able to see what it's uh, what it feels like to draw a bow i've already done a lot of the actual tillering that i'm going to do on this bow and i've got the knocks onto the ends here as you can see and now i'm roughing them out i'm using a rasp here which has also got a file on the other side I'm taking down the tips um, so that they actually meet flush into the knock so you get a nice transition between the, the centre of the bow tapering out evenly so it actually meets the knock. There's quite a lot of work to do on these knocks although they are quite small as I say this is a child's bow so I've actually used quite a, a small piece of horn but it's, it goes on very rough so I've uh, still got a fair amount of work to do. But as this is a medieval style bow, I'm not going to do the usual elaborate Victorian knocks that you may have seen in my other videos. So this is going to be a fairly basic shape. I'm using the uh, the back of the rasp here, the file side, to get rid of some of those harsher marks. And again, really, really start to blend in that knock and the wood so that hopefully it's seamless, get rid of any glue that might be visible on there from when, when I actually use the, the two-part epoxy to glue those knocks onto the end. And now I'm using the scraper uh, to get rid of even more marks the scraper is, uh, is very useful in uh, working on the bow quickly. Now we're on to the bottom knock here, so I'm doing the same process again. I'm taking down the edges of the bow here so that it meets meets into the knock. You may note here I've cha I changed slightly there. I was using two hands. I actually hold the bow with my elbow and side and I'm able to use slightly more steadily two hands on, on, the, uh, on the rasp there. And again, shaping the bottom knock. Um, the bottom knock there doesn't need to be quite as elaborate because it always gets jabbed in the ground. Now moving on to the top knock again, um, using a rat tail rasp here, which is basically a round file, which is just a bit more rasp-like than a file. And I'm putting in the initial groove. This is only going to be a sort of temporary groove. I'm actually going to let the string do the talking as far as showing where that string wants to sit on the knock. So it's just a sort of pretty much straight across mark and similarly here with the bottom knock as well. Now the bottom knock is going to have the bowyer's knot in it so it actually will be a, um, a, a, a groove that will go all the way around the uh, around the knock whereas the top knock which you'll see in a minute more sweeps down because it has a loop rather than a knot uh, so hopefully that will uh, be plain here there you can see there now so I've got the bow braced up and I'm able to mark where the string is actually going to go so rather than me trying to tell the string where to go the string is telling me where it wants to sit on that knock with that initial initial, initial groove that I put across the top there and obviously I'll mark the uh, the bottom knock as well. As you can see with that, uh, the bowyer's knot, it, the string actually sits around the knock rather than coming down it and towards the, uh, the wood itself. There we are, now I've got that pencil mark in. I can follow that using the using this round rat tail rasp again. Uh, this is all the rather daunting moment when you're working towards the bow, um, using, particularly using something like a rasp, and particularly is at the ends of the bow there, the bit that meets into the knock. There's so little room for error there. If you make a scratch or a mark when you're, you're this close to the bow being complete, um, it's very difficult to get any mark out if you do slip. Um, here I'm just using a round file to get rid of some of those marks and also this is slightly wider gauge on this uh, round file so that's widening up that uh, groove there for me. And here you can see that difference now so this is the, the bottom knock so it's a much shallower swoop down from the top 
um, and it actually meets at the back there you can just see where that uh, the, the knot will actually come back in on itself and again widening that out with the uh, the round file Now it means I get it, can get, get the bow up onto the tiller now. Um, I can check it now to see if there's any more tillering needs doing. And also because I've altered the shape of the bow by making those tips much narrower and slenderer. Uh, so I can check it now, see if it needs any final, final tillering, which it does, which I'll do a little bit on. I didn't film me doing that, um, but I noticed a few areas where I could uh, make some changes on this bow. Now that I've done all that final tillering, uh, I've done a bit of finishing on the bow as well, and I'm now finishing off the knock. So I've got the shape that I'm happy with, and I'm just using the scraper to get rid of any final marks that are on there. It's always rather pleasing when you use um, something like the scraper on the on the knock, so you, you get that really nice deep black colour. And uh, also you, you start to see then with, with Nox whether uh, there are any other colours that come through. Sometimes you get these reds and browns and um, a sort of see-through sections of, uh, of the buffalo horn that can, uh, can be attractive. The, but these ones are, are quite black. Now that I've done those, it's time to stain up the bow. We're going to give it a U stain, just give it again a bit more of a uh, medieval look to the bow, make it look a bit more like a U bow. Notice I've got a glove on there. This stuff uh, does stain your hands quite well. And just carefully apply it, really trying not to go over uh, too many of the same sections um, and just try and keep the strokes, strokes nice and even, really. Now obviously this U stain gives the look of the heartwood, but to create that sapwood heartwood divide I need to scrape away any of the stain that went onto the back, in this case the bamboo. So I'm going to scrape down to where the glue line is of the bamboo and the uh, lemon wood there. So you get that nice divide, You get it, it makes it look more like it's sapwood and heartwood. Uh, it gives you that overall feel of the U. I'm doing it quite straight here, as I say, following the glue line. On some bows, I may try to make them look a bit more characterful and actually make it a wavy line, because it isn't always even that distinction between the heart and the sapwood in a, in a U bow. They can be quite characterful. So you can you know, feel free, really, uh, if you're doing this, to make it look as characterful as you like. Once I'm happy with how much of that I've removed, it's on to fitting a handle. I'm going to use some uh, some brown leather that I've got a, a suitable piece of here. I think the colour goes quite well with this bow. So I'm going to need to, uh, there's my spaces there between the, the handle section there. So it's, uh, it's a fairly small bow, so it's about sort of four inch handle. Uh, so I've uh, removed any of the, um, the, uh, the stain and the uh, varnish on there. Otherwise it's uh, the glue's not going to not going to stick quite so well. Uh, so I've got to measure up uh, a piece of leather here, so I say going for about a four inch, four inch piece and getting rid of any of the excess here and try and get it as straight as I possibly can. Now one of the things that we found with uh, gluing particularly leather handles um, when you're doing a simple wrap handle like this is it's best to glue on the, the larger part of it, the majority of the handle and then leave it overnight because you can find it creeps it creeps back round so what we do is we will apply it um, as you can see here on the sort of the belly side of the bow and wrap it round and glue those sections on uh, the two flaps there is where I will eventually um, cut down and then butt up the two edges but as I say I'm going to glue for now the, the, the main meat of the bow there, the main meat of the handle, and leave that to dry overnight. I 
Uh, you can use any glue for this actually, uh, any sort of household glue, uh, Yoohoo. Um, this this is actually the HMG, it's uh, one that's used we use for the, the fletchings, uh, the fletching cement. Uh, just to apply some on both sides, apply some on the leather on the suede side in this instance and then some onto the bow itself. Um, as this is a contact type adhesive I'll leave it say 5-6 minutes to go tacky and then apply it on. Um, obviously you've got to carefully try and get it between the two lines that I've marked there so I know where the handle handle section actually is. And I'm pulling quite tightly here. Um, you've really got to get it on on quite well because obviously this is where the most of the wear is going to happen with the bow um, where lots of sticky fingered children uh, are going to be grabbing hold of this particular bow uh, as I say where it's uh, where it's destined to be going as a trial bow for young people to be using it's going to be handled quite a lot uh, excuse the pun so yeah here are some wrapping it around the edges there but I've left that top section dry there's no glue on those two flaps yet and there's no glue on the back now that's dried overnight and I'm just going to tape down those two flaps there so it makes it a bit easier for me to cut uh, so and then I will apply glue to these and hopefully um, they're, they're, that will have eliminated any of the creep and it won't move and open up the gap quite so much. Using a ruler here it's a, a lot easier to get that straight line down the back there. Always be careful when you're using a knife like this. I always um, feel a bit funny watching myself back when I'm using knives. I'm always worried about cutting my own fingers. There you are, I'm taking the tape off and there'll be a section in the middle and the last little bit to cut at the end there as well. There we go. So those two flaps there, I've put the, the glue on the back of the bow and as I say onto the uh, the flaps there themselves and again contact adhesive, I've let it, let it dry a little bit uh, before pushing them together. And now it's a case of uh, fiddling around really getting them pushed up tightly together and nice and as neat as possible really. Take your time with this, uh, you can take as much time as you like. I'm also wiping away some of the excess glue there from the, the back of the bow so it doesn't eat through to the, um, the bow itself. There you are, I'm quite happy with that fit, that's, uh, that's gone quite well and hopefully it'll stay like that for uh, many years to come. And there's the knocks, they're all polished up now. Again, it makes the black come out even more and, and the odd bit of fleck of colour that's in them. There's the bottom knock as well. Again, it's a more robust knock. It's going to be jabbed into the ground and what have you, so it's got to take a bit more punishment than the top one. And it all fits nicely into this rather neat bag. It's a mini bag we made. Leather tie at the top. And a strap. I think the kids are going to enjoy wearing that onto the battlefield. Well, that's the lot, folks. I've had enough of making bows and arrows for this week. It's Saturday as of uploading this video, so I'm going to go and do something else instead. Probably get drunk. If you want to see more videos, then I'll stick some up here. And if you want to subscribe, then hit that thing over there. And maybe give us a like if you like what you see. And please comment in the comment section below if you'd like to, well, tell us what you'd like to see next. See you again, folks, and thanks for watching.